Okay, so Maurizio, first off, thank you for joining us. We're very happy to be here. Obviously, our affiliation with you guys is something that we're very happy to be doing, and it's an honor to actually be here in person rather than just through Tom. So, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm in amazement of what you guys have put on here and to see how many people it brings together and the conversation it, in, it initiates and the great thought that happens. So the first thing I want to ask you is what kind of inspired you to put this together in the first place? Well, first of all, I am amazed and honored that you're here because, no, seriously, you guys did something super incredible. What we are doing is basically a different version of the same dream, and I'm si sincerely deeply honored. First of all, I need to say that from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> what inspired this? Well, ah, okay, short story. Um, there is an Indian sage that died in 82 called Nisargadatta Maharaj. Yeah. The book I Am That, I made about six films about him. And when I met Zaya, my partner, we went to India to film yet another movie about him. And one of the old translator told us that Nisargadatta used to say, one day scientists will come and understand all this. What I'm teaching here is not spirituality, is a scientific knowledge. That line resonates in our mind, we sort of discarded it, and all of a sudden, a few months later, we find ourselves talking about, hey, what do we do next with this movie? Clearly, you don't survive making a movie about somebody who doesn't want to have disciples. Mm -hmm. So, we decided to make a conference about science and uh, non-duality inspired by him. And since then, things happen like as a miracle, as all good things should happen and do happen. Basically, we decide on a date and uh, call a hotel, the only hotel available, and you tell at a cancellation for that specific date in high peak season in October. Mm -hmm. So we booked it and blah, 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 blah. It's just been, really, I can tell you many stories of why the only real story is the fact that it's happening and we are just the instrument of that. I mean, it's just, <laughs> life is working. And do you feel that year by year, as the conference obviously evolves itself, does the inspiration of where you want to take it next just kind of come naturally or is there something you always have like as you look at this year is there something you're already imagining next year to take it to the next level or the next version of it see this is a kind of the essence of our success and our curse uh, we have been trying for a while to to have five five years plan this kind of stuff and it sound when you read it and when you look at it a week later it looks so ridiculous this, this is something that started from the heart and it's continuing from the heart. We have absolutely no idea where it goes, but I can tell you we have a lot of seeds that we are planting. One of them even, we are talking about the permanent community. We are talking about building it. You know, we, we are a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but things happen. And, and on the other hand, we, we, basically there is no limit, limit to the dream, but there is absolutely a lot of limitation to reality and we acknowledge, we are, we are playing the dance between the two. Mm -hmm. So our decisions are always you know, vanilla or chocolate in this moment, yeah. and we follow that, trying to always keep the heart open. So, try to make our decision based uh, not necessarily on economical for sure, mm -hmm. on anything, based, based only does it feel right? If something feels right, yeah. we'll do it. If it doesn't feel right, we don't. And that's a curse, on the other hand, because it doesn't allow you, some people have difficulty to join us in a way. We say, oh, you, what are you going to do in five years? And, I don't know, maybe we, I don't know open a grocery <laughs> store. I have no idea what I do in five years. We, we always sincerely believe that each conference could be the last one and we are open to that possibility. And that said, it's still growing and we are fully committed to, to this movement, to this little thing we created. It's almost in the, in the essence of what you're presenting here is the whole idea of truly living in the moment of it. And that's what it seems like you guys are doing to a large degree, living in the moment of just this conference right now and seeing what comes of it and really seeing how things can shift at any given moment. It's really nice. In a way, it's the only honest way to, to live life. I mean, uh, if you uh, spend the picture a little bit, I mean, many friends of mine are not here any longer, much younger than me. And sometimes people, you know, you, I don't know, bad news for many of your listeners, but we all gonna die one day. <laughs> and we don't know when it's gonna happen. It could, it could happen really. So making plan is beautiful, but you have to be aware that you're just making a story of a, of a blueprint, of a, of, a, of a romance, of the life. But you know, life gets in the way, and if you can keep a, the right attitude or the wrong attitude and accept uh, whatever comes to you, then all of a sudden life gets a different meaning. You know? Everything mm -hmm. is beautiful. Perfection appears if you accept, start accepting what is. That's true. And uh, in one of the panels yesterday that, I, that really stood out to me, they were talking about um, what inspired, I guess, their activism or what mm. kind of put them down the, the rabbit hole to being, I guess, different or whatever you want to call it. So I'm, I'm curious, in your case, 
whether it's what led to sand itself or what led to you just kind of delving into the life that you're living now, what was that kind of aha moment that really made you see things differently in this world? Ooh, oh, <laughs> I, hmm. aha moment. Many, many. I, I don't know. I, I don't think I can point to one aha moment. But talking about activism, if you don't mind, I'm going to yeah, go in course. that direction. Zaya was a, now, since she's not here, I can talk about her. She hates when I do this, but you guys should know this. Zaya, she's my partner. She's one of the most powerful women in this planet. She brought activism in Eastern Europe, in Bulgaria. There was no such a thing in her country. And her and her friend, they opened this uh, activism um, organization, right? And uh, just to give you a little example of the strength of that woman, uh, she will hate me when she hears this. There, there was the, the crisis of the missile with the Soviet Union, and uh, she decided to... The, the Bulgarian government was saying it, the nuclear plants in Bulgaria are absolutely safe. So she decided to go with a German crew, German television crew, with a fisherman inside the nuclear plant, filming inside the nuclear plant. It was so safe. The, fi the movie came out in the German TV. Big scandal. The, the Bulgarian government almost failed. The prime minister took her on the side in, in her office, one-on-one, -on -one, eye to eye, and said, if you don't stop this, you're going to disappear. And she continued. <laughs> That's a kind of a woman. So anyway, the, she, we have this kind of character. We don't necessarily see much of a difference between reality and fiction in our life. And, and on my side, I, in my small world, I'm the kind of guy who first jump and then realize, oh shit, I have to learn how to swim now. And that's how we do. That's, that's an amazing way to do it. If the whole world was like that, <laughs> that would, that would be trouble. Yeah. That would be trouble. Be a little dangerous. <laughs> Um, the one other question I had was, um, I guess, kind of like a, as a takeaway in the sense of one thing that's really cool about this conference is that, and this comes with our conscious awareness, that we know that it doesn't just impact the people that are actually here mm -hmm. and not just the people that are even watching this video. It kind of uploads into the collective consciousness. It shifts that because it's, it's creating conversations. It's creating so much that even people who have no idea what's going on right now are being impacted by this. So for you, what is like one key takeaway or one key message you would like to deliver to the world as something either they can practically make a change from or something you'd love to see them build an awareness about? Is there anything that just stands out to you? Yeah, that, that would be a bit uh, ambitious and presu presumptuous for me to say that. The only thing I can say, my sensation, my, my perception is that we are really all connected. And I don't mean it in a very Californian mystical way. Oh God, we are all connected. Yeah. No, I, I really mean it, we are connected in a way. Uh, this is something I always try to describe and I always fail. So allow me to fail one more time. We have a body, we have an, an organism, which we call one, right? It's one organism, right? But if you think my finger, my heart, my lungs, my feet, they're all separate things in a bizarre way, even though they act as a whole. But I'm so a cell of my heart is different than a cell of my lung and they have different work and different, different functioning, right? Mm -hmm. But they do, a lung does what the lung does, the heart does what the lung, the heart does, the pinky does what the pinky does. And all of them do their own little part and they are connected. And somehow this organism as a whole is able to function, to talk in this thing and make no sense in what he's saying. <laughs> But so, in a way, I really deeply believe, especially when I look at the sky, infinite, freaks me out every time I look at the stars, totally freaks me out. If I see that and I see our little planet, I think we are just little molecule, little particle of the larger organism, which I don't know where it starts and I don't know where it ends. I'm not going to say Gaia, the planet is you. I'm not going to say that you, I, I don't know the limits of this. I have no idea of anything. The only thing I know that I feel I'm part of something that I absolutely I do not understand, nor I ever believe I will be able to understand. My, my sensation is that my only job is to do what I do. I don't know if I'm a molecule of the heart or the lungs or, or the pinky. I have no idea. I only know that when I wake up in the morning, it becomes evident to me that I want to have breakfast, go to the bathroom, maybe in the other order, brush my teeth and move on, you know, and, and I do what I have to do. So yeah. the only thing I would say, the only thing I would say to anybody, just listen and do what you think is, you know what you have to do. And just do that. And uh, what you do is entirely different from what somebody else is doing. And you have no idea mm -hmm. uh, of the repercussion of your action 
because you think what you're doing is maybe is not important, but God knows. Maybe the fact that you work in a washing dishes in a kitchen, in a place, for some bizarre reason that you have absolutely no idea can have a repercussion on somebody else's life. That then da 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 da. We are all part of this metaphysical. Huh? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I love, yeah. I love the way you describe that. And I want to finish off with one other question because something that excites me at Collective Evolution is seeing the evolution of, of the way things have happened where before a lot of people would be into this stuff but very secretively mm -hmm. or you know just kind of doing it privately versus now you kind of see people are not only into it publicly but they're even sharing it with people mm -hmm. and, and they're getting excited about this content. They're seeking this content. So I'm curious in terms of this event and the evolution of it from the first year now to where you are do you see a drastic difference in the people that come out, the experience that they have from it? Does it, does it excite you in that way? Yeah, totally. And again, we are not uh, bound to the result. But what, what is happening to us, especially personally, to me and Zaya especially, we started as 1980, very advaita, not this, not that. Yeah. I am the absolute, everything comes through me, I'm going through things, emotion, sensation come through me, but I'm not them. You know, this sort of feeling. Of, uh, and then some things happen on a personal level that all of a sudden we realize, oh shit, this is not good. No, I don't want this. And you realize your limitation. So there has been an evolution that moved from not this, not that, to and this and that. So now the distinction, and I see it reflecting in the conference, the distinction comes from I'm the absolute, I'm separate, nothing touches me, is becoming more everything touches me i'm still the absolute everything touched me but the fact that i have this form in this body for this very brief time period allows me to re to connect to it so i'm trying to connect we try to connect us as a family and i feel us as a community there is this evolution from this absolute being detached to this absolute being completely touched and the line that describes it is the famous zen uh, saying First there was a mountain, then there was no mountain, and then there was a mountain again. But now the mountain is still the same mountain, it looks exactly the same, but you perceive it as a mountain connected to every river, to every other mountain, to all. So first there was a mountain, then there was no mountain, then there is a mountain again. Love that. That's powerful. <laughs> That's powerful. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Mark. And again, again for having us. Thank you for being here. It's, it's really sincerely an honor. And, you know, we are two molecules that are trying to do the same work. We yeah. don't know where it's going to go, but <laughs> I'm happy to be on your side. I think we're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> Tom, the man who made it. <laughs> started all this. It's the mastermind behind it all. <laughs> so, are you ready? Are you rolling? Okay. Yes. Cool. Okay, so 